Hey gang, using the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, will get you 10% off any order over $10 at Flipside Gaming. It'll also get you 10% off any orders of singles at Multizone. And it'll get you 10% off most products at Original Magic Art, with the exceptions of some paintings. If these fine sites don't have what you're looking for, you can also consider using my affiliate link when ordering from TCG Player. And if you'd like to join the generic goblin gang to support this channel, there's a link to my Patreon in the description below. Hey gang, and welcome back. Today's game is another Game Breaker game, with Nick playing Chandra. He keeps three mountains, Vance's blasting cannons, Hostility, Chandra's regulator, and Reverberate. New to the channel is Simon, playing his Obnixilus Planeswalker deck, keeping an abhorrent Overlord, Promise of Power, Erebos God of the Dead, Cabal Stronghold, Two Swamps, and Bajuka Bog. Eric is playing the Gitrog monster, keeping a Bloodstained Mire, Verdant Catacombs, Valrath Stronghold, Retreat to Hagra, Torment of Hailfire, Vampiric Tutor, and Whip of Erebos. Ben is playing Savra, keeping Rescue from the Underworld, Storev, Bloodgast, Grim Backwoods, Twilight Mire, Swamp, and the Black and Green Garuk. Eric wins the die roll and starts us off. Eric plays and cracks his Bloodstained Mire, losing one to find a bayou. He shortcuts before searching, casting a Birds of Paradise, and passing. Nick simply plays a Mountain. Ben plays a Twilight Mire, passing a Simon. Simon plays a Tap Pajuka Bog, and exiles Eric's Graveyard. Eric plays a Verdant Catacomb, passing. Nick plays a Mountain, and taps out for Chandra's Regulator. Ben plays a Swamp, tapping the Mire for double black, and casts a Bloodgast. Simon plays a Swamp, and passes. At the end of turn, Eric casts his Vampiric Tutor, and with the spell on the stack, loses another life to sacrifice his Catacombs to find a land first, and then Tutor for a card to put on top. Eric draws and casts the Crucible he tutored for, saying he'll play the Verdant from his graveyard and sacrifice it to go and find a land before passing to Nick. Nick plays a Mountain and casts his Commander. Ben draws for turn and goes to combat. He hits Eric for two with the Bloodgast, and in his second main phase, plays a Forest before passing. Simon plays a Swamp. Eric draws and plays his Verdant Catacomb from the yard and sacrifices it to find a land. He then taps 5 for the Gitrog monster and plays and sacrifices the Verdant Catacombs again, drawing a card before going to find a land and passing to Nick. Nick plays a Mountain and pays 2 for a Ruby Medallion, passing. Ben draws and goes to combat. The Bloodgast goes at Eric, who blocks with his newly found Dryad Arbor. With the Arbor dying, Eric gets to draw a card from the Gitrog monster. Ben then plays a Command Tower in a second main phase, bringing the Gas back, and plays Savra before passing turn. Simon plays a Swamp and casts an Erebos God of the Dead and passes turn. On Eric's upkeep, he sacrifices a Swamp and draws to the Gitrog monster's triggers. He draws for turn and plays a Swamp from his yard and then the Dryad Arbor. He taps a Forest for a Sylvan Safekeeper, and then pays 2 for Lightning Greaves, which he sticks onto the Dryad Arbor. This lets him tap the Arbor for a green, and is able to cast a Retreat to Hagra. He then moves the Greaves over to the Gitrog monster, and swings his commander at Ben, who takes the hit for 6. At the end of turn, Nick activates his Regulator, discarding Hostilities, which shuffles itself in, and then draws a card. He also taps Chandra to deal 1 to Eric. Nick starts his turn and draws. He plays a Mountain and deals one to Eric with Chandra. He then casts Vance's Blasting Cannons, untapping Chandra and passing to Ben. Ben plays Grim Backwoods for turn and passes. Simon plays a Cabal Stronghold and taps 5 for Promise of Power. He chooses the mode to lose 5 life and draw 5 cards, and Nick likes this so much he copies it with his copy of Reverberate. Simon then has to discard down to 7, as he passes to Eric. Eric untaps and sacrifices his forest to the Gitrog trigger, drawing a card from it, and then drawing from turn. He plays a forest from the yard, triggering the retreat, and drains his opponents for 1. He then plays a swamp, and does it again. 
Eric then plays out Mana Crypt and casts a Torment of Hailfire where X is 7. With the spell in the stack, Ben taps his lands and creatures to cast a Court of Calling where X is 4. Nick also uses this as a chance to deal 1 to Eric with Chandra. Ben settles for a Pawn of Ulamog. Ben then sacrifices his creatures and discards a card and loses 9. Simon discards 3 from his hand, taking 12, while Nick takes 9 as well after discarding 3 cards and sacrificing Chandra. With 3 black creatures being sacrificed, Ben also pays 2 life 3 times to force his opponents to sacrifice 3 creatures thanks to Savra. He also gains some Eldrazi spawn. One of the creatures Eric loses is his Dryad Arbor, which lets him draw a card from the Gitrog monster, and he then goes to combat, hitting Simon for 6 with his commander. Nick exiles a mountain to the cannons and draws for turn. He plays it and casts a Combustible Gear Hulk, targeting Simon as it enters. Simon says draw three cards, and Nick then passes, discarding down to seven. Ben draws and plays a Swamp, bringing back his Blood Gas from the yard with the Landfall trigger. We then see Ben tapping a lot of mana to cast Karuk, Apex Predator. He upticks the walker, making a beast token, and passes. Simon plays a Swamp and casts his Mana Crypt. He then taps a lot of mana for a Deathbringer Regent and tells Ben it's up to him if the board gets wiped because of his tokens. Ben is fine with it, not sacrificing any of the spawn, and as the dragon resolves, it wipes the board. Simon then passes turn. Eric rolls for his Mana Crypt and avoids damage. He draws for turn, recasting his commander. This lets him play Yavimaya Hollow and then a Wooded Foothills, sacrificing it and losing one to go and find a land. His opponents will each have lost three life, while Eric gains nothing because of Erebos. He moves the Greaves over onto his commander and heads to combat, swinging him at Simon. Simon blocks with a Deathbringer, and at the end of turn, Nick activates the Regulator, discarding a card and drawing one. Nick exiles a Primal Amulet to the cannons, and plays a cryptic case for his land drop. He then passes turn, and the amulet is exiled forever. Ben draws, and plays a Varaska the Unseen. He down ticks her to blow up Eric's retreat, and then up ticks Garuk to make another beast token, and passes. Simon rolls for his crypt, and fails, taking three. He plays a worn power stone, and then drops Batter Skull before passing turn. Eric rolls for his crypt, and succeeds in not taking damage. He sacrifices a Swamp to the Gitrog Monster's trigger, drawing for Mitt and then for turn. He plays a Swamp from his hand and casts Bulls as Citadel. He then casts off the top of his library, Reanimate, losing one life to cast it, bringing the Dryad Arbor back and losing no life since it has no converted mana cost. Eric then looks again and pays three life for a Springbloom Druid. He sacrifices a land, drawing, and goes to find two basics for the field. Eric then plays a Command Beacon and Windswept Heath as his land drops. He casts Soaring off the top, losing another life, and then sacrifices the Heath, losing one life, to go and find a land. He draws first from the Gitrog monster. He shuffles up and looks at his top card. He then casts from hand Centaur Vinecrasher, who comes in with 9 plus 1 plus 1 counters. Eric then moves the Greaves onto the Crasher, and he swings the Gitrog monster and Vinecrasher at Simon with Simon blocking the Gitrog monster. Before moving to damage, Nick flashes in Dictate of the Twin Gods, which, unfortunately, even with blocks and the lifelink, is still enough damage for Simon to get taken out. This does have the upside of forcing Eric to activate his Yavimaya Hollow to regenerate his commander. Eric then casts a Cultivate in his second main phase, and moves the Greaves onto the Dryad Arbor to cast the Deathrite Shaman, and then moves them onto the Deathrite. He then decides to move them over to the Gitrog monster, and passes to Nick. At the end of turn, Nick discards a mountain to the Regulator and draws a card. Nick exiles Torbrand to the cannons and plays a Forge of Heroes as his land drop. He suggests to Ben that they form an alliance of convenience until they deal with Eric's massive board, and Ben agrees while Nick resolves Torbrand and then puts to stack an overloaded Mizium Mortars. This will have every creature that Nick's opponents control take 10 if it resolves. Eric responds to the overloaded spell, losing 3 life to cast Beast Within off the top of his library and blow up the Dictate. 
The creatures then take six instead, with the vine crasher surviving, and Nick then passes. Ben down ticks Garuk to destroy the vine crasher and gains 10 life. He up ticks Frasca and then pays 5 for what Ben calls a poorly sequenced black market, passing turn. Eric rolls for his crypt and avoids taking damage once more. He draws for turn and looks at his top card with the citadel. He then plays Dread Presence and plays out a fetch land from his yard. He pays the two green to return the Vine Crasher to hand as he sacrifices it and loses one life to go and find a land. He finds a swamp and the Dread Presence deals two to Torbran and gains Eric two life. Eric then recasts the Gitrog monster and then lets him play an Urborg as his second land drop, which sees itself as a swamp when it enters. Eric has the Presence deal two more to Torbran, who dies and gives Ben's Black Market a counter and gains Eric another two life. The Greaves then go into the Gitrog monster, and Eric swings him at Garuk, taking him out. Nick exiles Ghost Quarter the cannons and draws for turn. He plays the Ghost Quarter for his land drop and swings the beast at Eric for three. In his post combat main phase, Nick then casts Ember Maw Hellion and then recasts his commander before passing to Ben. Ben draws and gains a black man in his main phase for the black market trigger. He casts Beacon of Unrest, bringing back Storiv, and shuffles the beacon into his library. Ben then down takes Frasca and takes out the Dread Presence, which Eric doesn't think is very nice. That's not very nice. This gives Ben's market another counter, and Ben passes. Eric untaps and rolls for his crypt, avoiding damage again. He sacrifices a swamp for Gitrog, drawing from it, and then for turn. He plays Volrath Stronghold as his land drop and activates it to put the Dread Presence back on top. He's able to cast it off the top of his library for 4 life with the Citadel, and with the Presence on the stack, Nick taps his Ghost Quarter to take out the Urborg. Eric finds a Swamp, and the Dread Presence then resolves. Eric then plays the Urborg from his yard, and deals 2 to Chandra and gains 2 life from the Presence trigger. He then recasts the Vine Crasher, who comes in with 12 plus 1 plus 1 counters. He moves the Greaves over to it, and swings it and the Gitrog monster at Nick for 18. Nick takes the full hit, and Eric then passes. Nick exiles a Fireball to the Cannon's trigger, and plays a Mountain. He then casts Furnace of Wrath, and then casts Fireball where X is big enough when coupled with the Hellion to take Eric out, and he then passes turn. Ben gets two black mana from the Black Market, and uses one of it to filter the Twilight Mire for double green. He uses the one black floating in the green to cast Eternal Witness, who enters and returns Frasca. Ben then casts her, and down ticks her to take out the Hellion. This means that when Ben swings with Storev, even if Nick blocks, the two damage that bleeds over from Trample becomes four because of the Furnace, and Nick gets taken out. Game review time. So, unfortunately for Simon, it seemed like his deck wasn't doing a heck of a lot, and even with his drawing and ramping, he was struggling to establish a board state. Unfortunately, he also got picked on pretty heavily by Eric in this game, and I think Eric was concerned with the amount of exile that Simon could have had in his deck. Eric was definitely the arch enemy of this game, as we saw from turn 1. I think if not for the fact that Ben and Nick agreed to stop any kind of hostilities between each other until Eric was dealt with, he probably would have won the game. By the end of it, Nick was in a bit of a tight position since he needed to cast the Furnace of Wrath to take out Eric, but it also left him very vulnerable to the crackback that he knew that Ben was going to have the next turn. I don't think he was expecting the Varaska to remove his other creature, since if he was able to block with both of them, he would have been fine for the next turn. I think Ben was in a great position near the end, and he navigated the game very well. He was using his Planeswalkers to deal with a lot of Eric's creatures, which certainly made it easy to make an alliance with Nick later on. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mtgmudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.